Welcome back to our ongoing series, Let's Learn the Lens Meter. Today we are taking lens number two from our kit and starting to work with that. We're going to have a brief whiteboard lesson before we dig into lens number two. Because lens number two is where we're going to just start the fundamental steps of reading a prescription from a lens. That is going to require us to understand the power drum, which is in fact nothing more or less than a number line. The power drum, particularly on the LM101, between Plano and three, plus and minus, is broken down like this. Each one of the little tiny lines between your whole number, let's just say zero and one, represents a one eighth diopter step. If we're writing the prescription, we write the fractional amount as a decimal. And we of course write them as quarter diopter steps as 0 0.25, 0 0.5075, and our whole number. If you're working on tolerance, or if you're working with a very specific prescription that someone has written in an eighth diopter step, you may in fact see one written out as 1.37 or 2.87. It does happen. If you're not sure of this, again, go to the Optician Works website. I have practice tests. I have a printout where you can print out the number line and the, the power drum and then sit there. You don't even need a lens meter at home. You can do it just sitting at a desk. So practice this before you jump into lens two because you are going to need to know it. Reading the prescription or setting up a lens to fill a prescription using the lens meter power drum is a two-step process. Step one, get good crisp sphere lines. Look at the power, that is your sphere power. That's the first number of your prescription. You're gonna turn the drum most likely away from you. We're working in minus cylinder form. We'll get into that eventually. Turn it away, you're gonna get good cylinder lines. You're gonna look at the drum. The number that's on the drum tells you, it tells you a lot, but it is not part of the prescription. It is the distance from that first number to the number that you end up at you count, literally, take a pencil, count down, count between the diopter values. The distance that the drum has traveled is the amount of cylinder present in the lens. That is what you would write down. Note your axis and you'd know what power is actually in that lens and what prescription you could fill with it. If I put a lens into the lens meter and I turn the power drum, rotate the lens around, fiddle faddle, and I get beautiful, crisp, sharp sphere lines at 150. This is reading number one. This is my sphere of power. I'm good with that. I can write that down. If my second drum reading, when I turn it away from me, and I find I have good, crisp cylinder lines, is at three. This is my second drum reading. If I've gone from 150, 150 to two, to 250, to three, I have moved my power drum one and a half diopters more minus. This is my cylinder value. My script would be minus 150, minus 150. The three has nothing to do with the prescription as it's written, the power. It is the distance I've traveled from here to here that gives me my cylinder, my second number in my prescription. Let's look at another example. If my first drum reading is here, at plus one, I've got good crisp sphere lines, and I turn my power drum away from me, minus direction, and my cylinder lines fall into beautiful, crisp, clear, sharp lines at minus 150. My sphere power is plus one, and I've gone one, two, 
and a half diopters more minus. This is my cylinder value, my cylinder amount. My script in this case would be plus one minus 250 with whatever my axis wheel is set to. Notice that my 150, that number, this is where I am, I'm at 150, has nothing to do with anything that I'm writing here. The distance traveled becomes your cylinder value. Your cylinder value is that middle piece of your prescription, in this case a plus one, minus 250, and whatever your axis wheel is set at. There is a ton more information about reading prescriptions from the lens meter at the Optician Works website. If you're struggling with this at all, review, repeat that lesson, and then come back and start the videos again. You should already be familiar with the parts and the pieces that make up the lens meter. You should be familiar with putting it into focus for your individual eyesight. And you should have practiced quite a bit with lens one so that you're really comfortable moving that lens around, taking that little bit of tension off, getting it centered, getting it in focus, how the power drum feels. Because number two lens, we're gonna jump into something that's a little bit more complex and you're gonna be kind of working all those things together along with the axis wheel to get your prescription readings. Lens number two says, and you can read along, is a basic loose single vision sphero cylinder lens. A sphero cylinder lens has different power in different places on the lens. You will use lens number two to learn how to recognize sphere lines in focus, cylinder lines in focus, any lens that is on axis. The prescription or the power of the lens number two is a plus two minus one. Keep that out and keep that in front of you. It's very important. Let's take lens two out of the envelope. Make sure that you have the etched marking for a two on there somewhere so that you know you have the right lens in the right envelope. Let's put that lens as close to the center as we can and lower our lens holder gently up in place. We can turn the lens meter on and because our prescription says that it is a plus two minus one, we are gonna rotate our power drum to plus two. We are going to rotate our axis wheel to a completely random 75. Looking inside the lens meter, you have a one in 180 shot at getting this right the first time. So chances are you're not going to have exactly perfect closed sphere lines. What you're gonna see when you look inside is gonna be some combination of what I'm showing you here. They could be fuzzy, they could be broken, they could be displaced. And what we're gonna do now is what you're gonna do for the rest of your life as an optician, you're gonna start a little orchestrated move and you are going to be moving the lens around. You're gonna be rotating the lens around and you're gonna be playing with your power drum. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So looking inside, what I wanna do is rotate my lens slowly, carefully, smoothly around until I have good, beautiful, crisp, closed sphere lines. And what I want you to do is just what you were doing with lens one, I want you to try to split that center sphere line with the reticle target centers. So go ahead and get that all lined up so you have something that looks like that. Now looking inside, I want you to slowly rotate the power drum away from you until you have beautiful closed cylinder lines. Once we've gone through the steps once, what are we gonna do? We're going to do them again. This time, I'm gonna set my axis wheel to 30. My power drum, I'm gonna make sure it is on plus two. I'm gonna set my lens against the lens stop, gently lower my lens holder back down and I am going to slowly but surely rotate my lens around until I have beautiful closed sharp sphere lines. This is the time that you can use your chrome knurled sleeve and that will help you get your crosshairs 
in line with your axis because that is going to help when you turn your power drum away from you and get your good crisp cylinder lines. Go ahead and practice getting the cylinder lines split. Rotate back to your spear. Make sure you're centered there. Back, forwards. And I'm good to go for an axis of 30 degrees. Got my dots. I could go ahead and block this and edge this lens. I'm gonna run through it one more time. Obviously, you can make up 180 possible combinations of this. This time, we are gonna spin our axis wheel around to 143. I'm gonna make sure that my power drum is on plus two. I'm going to take my lens and rest it against the lens stop. Slowly and gently release my lens holder against the front of it. Looking inside, I'm going to remove my chrome knurled sleeve so that it splits what I see. And I'm going to rotate my lens around until I have good, beautiful, crisp, clear spear lines. I'm going to rotate my drum away from me until I have beautiful, crisp cylinder lines. I could dot up and I could do my finishing work. I want to touch on this really briefly. We'll, we'll keep building on this. And when we get to the finishing part of this, those last three lenses, we'll get into this in a whole lot more depth. If you forget to move your power drum from that plus one to your plus two, and you put your lens in here and you rotate it around and you got beautiful spear lines in there and they're crisp and they're lined up and you go to move your power drum away from you to get cylinder lines you're not going to get anything you're just going to get more and more blur well it turns out you would have to turn your power drum in the opposite direction or the plus direction in order to get crisp cylinder lines that's touching on the plus cylinder minus cylinder idea. For right now, I just want you to keep in mind, we know what we have. We have a plus two minus one. It's written in minus cylinder form. It's why we're going from our two towards our one in a minus direction. And that's all I wanna say about that right now. If you catch yourself unable to find what you need, that's why but we'll talk about how you determine which one you have when you have a lens of unknown power a little bit later in the series. Next time, we will pick up with a complete mounted pair, which is number three. In the meantime, obviously, practice, 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 and I will see you next week.